Cauldron is another game I grew up absolutely loving as a child, and spoiler alert, I now find this largely unplayable. Cauldron sees you, as a witch, searching the land for keys which lead to dungeons. In these various dungeons, you'll find various ingredients with which to make a spell that will, according to the cassette inlay, rid the pumpkin from the land. Now, presumably the witch doesn't want to simply abolish pumpkins, she's actually trying to rid the land of the pump king. Probably worth clarifying. So part one of the game sees you flying around the overworld, and initial impressions are pretty good. Graphics are crisp and clear, the single screens are well defined with areas of forest, graveyards, and the vast deep ocean. Enemies that spawn on these screens are directly related to the area that you're in too, which is nice. So ghosts for the graveyard, bats for the forest, and um, gigantic bloody seagulls <laughs> over the ocean. You do have an attack that can be utilised on these screens, but this is where we start to get into the annoyances of the game straight away. Your attack is fine, and it's relatively accurate, but its application is almost unnecessary unless something happens to appear directly in your way. Enemies respawn at such a rate that wasting any time on these screens will see you lose more health than if you just zoomed on to the next screen. Flying too low will also see enemies spawn directly on top of you, so you tend to utilise only about 20% of the screen space at any given time. This will result in you flying from one screen to the next, sometimes seeing no enemies at all, sometimes ignoring enemies entirely, and sometimes, just sometimes, firing off a shot to clear your path. This continues until you come across a key. Here, you'll need to land on a patch of grass, at which point you become entirely defenseless. We're then stuck walking. 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 And soaking up any damage the game throws our way, because there is literally nothing you can do. You can't shoot, you can't fly away, because the witch will just end up rotating herself into oblivion. You just have to accept that this is your fate for 20 seconds. Walking and absorbing damage. Once you've collected some keys and found a door of the relevant colour, you land next to the entryway and... Walking... 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 You're finally into the second part of the game. And this is where things get truly ugly. Ugly? <gasps> This part of the game takes the form of a single screen platformer. Your ability to shoot is still completely neutered, and for some reason the witch has decided she can't fly at all anymore, so you're stuck with jumping and walking. The jumping here is awkward as hell, with the trajectory of the jump being fixed to a single arc that you're either going to have to get used to or die trying, and you will die trying, because this is absolutely merciless. Enemies drain your health, but that doesn't matter too much because if you drop too far, that's just an instant loss of life anyway. I was never quite sure how far was too far, but even after playing for an hour, I still haven't quite got it right. By far the worst part of this, though, is the sheer amount of blind guesses you have to make when moving from screen to screen. You're never sure if you should jump your way into the next screen, fall into the next screen, walk into the next screen. There's no indication of whether or not you're going to die just from simply moving from one screen to the next. Jumping from platform to platform on the same screen can be just as merciless though. If you don't hit the platform dead on then there's a good chance you're just going to fall right through it anyway, resulting in another death that you didn't deserve. You have to collect a total of 6 ingredients all in, and while 8 lives seems like a reasonable amount, you'll lose barely any of them to things which are genuinely your fault. My grand total of ingredients that I managed to collect were 1, and even then only by the skin of my teeth. As a kid, I don't even remember getting to that lofty height. I have a huge amount of nostalgia for this game, but even that isn't enough to look past the fact that this is fundamentally broken. With practice and a good memory or some map making skills, you may be able to eventually map out each of the dungeons so that you know exactly where to go or where to jump, but ultimately there's still a good chance you're going to be killed off by the game's own mechanics. Oh, brothers mine, take care, take care. The great white witch rides out tonight. 
O younger brother's mind, beware! Look not upon her beauty bright, for in her glance there is a snare, and in her smile there is a